Hi everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Micah and this channel is dedicated to learning, teaching, and discussing everything about cybersecurity. So I know it's been a while, but I thought since TriHack Me is releasing their Hackerween, Hackoween, whatever, Hackertober, I forgot what it's called, um, their set of challenges, thought that this would be a perfect time for me to make a new video. So today we're gonna be going through the Print Nightmare, the original Print Nightmare Room, not the new one released, as a precursor for the um, print nightmare again room, which is more of or geared towards the hacker wing challenges. So let's go ahead and reset this room because I did this last night. And then let's go ahead and connect to try hack me. And in my case, it is under my document. Oh, looks like I'm missing something. Huh, okay. Okay, try hack me. There we go. And let's do sudo open VPN, my child. Okay, cool. Looks like I'm connected. And I can double check here and access. And I am connected. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's start reading through some of this uh, these tasks here. So the introduction, this room will cover the print night nightmare vulnerability from an offensive and defensive perspective per Microsoft. A remote code execution vulnerability exists when the Windows print spooler service improperly performs privileged file operations. That is a mouthful. An attacker who successfully exploited this vulnerability can or could run arbitrary code with system privileges. And that is really bad. So uh, an attacker could then install programs, view, change, or delete data, or create new accounts with full user rights. And um, so our learning objective for this room is to learn about the print nightmare vulnerability, how to exploit it, and then how to mitigate against it. And we'll also learn some detec detection mechanisms using e Windows event logs and Wireshark. So as an outcome, we want to be ready to defend our organization against any potential print nightmare attacks. And that's pretty awesome that TriHack Me um, released a room like this. So prerequisites, uh, you should be familiar with Wireshark, Windows event logs, some Linux fundamentals, fundamentals and interpreter. So let's go ahead and hit complete it because we read that. And we're gonna start out at the Windows print spooler service. So Microsoft defines the print spooler service as a service that runs on each computer system. As you can guess from the name, the print spooler service manages the printing process processes. The print spooler's responsibilities are managing the print jobs, receiving files to be printed, queuing them, and scheduling. You are able to start, stop, pause, resume the print spooler service by simply navigating to services on your Windows system. And it has a, a screen cap of the services on a Windows system. And then it's showing us the print spooler properties inside of the services as well. So um, one thing to note here is the path to this executable, this spool sv.exe that will come up later. Um, so print spooler service makes sure to provide enough resources to the computers uh, that send out the print jobs. Remember the early days when users had to wait for print jobs to finish to perform other operations? Well, the print spooler service took care of this issue for us and introduced a vulnerability. But anyways, the print spooler service allows the system to act as print clients, administrative clients, or print servers. It is also important to note that the print spooler service is enabled by default in all Windows clients and servers. It's necessary to have a print spooler service on the computer to connect to printer. There are third-party software and drivers provided by the print printer manufacturers that would not require you to have the print spooler service enabled. Still, most companies prefer to utilize print spooler services. And lastly, the domain controllers mainly use print spooler service for printer pruning, the process of removing the printers that are not in use anymore on the network and have been added as objects to Active Directory. Printer pruning eliminates the issues for the, for the users reaching out to a non-existent printer. You will soon know why we mentioned domain controllers. And where would you go to enable or disable the print spooler service? And we just read that it is services on a Windows system. So moving on along here. 
So to better understand the print nightmare vulnerability or any vulnerability, you should get into the habit of researching the vulnerabilities by reading Microsoft articles on any Windows specific CVE or browsing, browsing through the internet for community and vendor blog posts. There has been some confusion at the CVE 2021-1675 and CVE 2021-34527 are related to each other. They go under the same name, Windows Print Spooler Remote Code Execution Vulnerability, and are both related to the Print Spooler. So let's go ahead and open these two links. As Microsoft states in the FAQ, FAQ the Print Nightmare CVE 2021-34527 527 vulnerability is similar but distinct from the vulnerability that is assigned CVE 2021-1675. The attack vector is different as well. So what does that mean exactly? So if we go to the Microsoft FAQ or their um, CVE website or article, whatever you want to call it, we see that the attack vector is different for these two uh, vulnerabilities. So this is the 2021-1675, and we see that the attack vector is local, meaning that the attacker will have to have local or pretty much hands-on keyboard um, access to the vulnerable machine. And here for the CVE 2021-34527, the attack vector is network. That means this is a remote, uh, a remote attack vector. The attacker can be anywhere in the world and attack remotely as long as they have access over the network to that system. And so that is the main difference between these two vulnerabilities. So uh, going on along, let's see. To exploit the CVE 2021-1675 vulnerability, the attacker would need to have direct or local access, which we just said. And to exploit the 2021-34527, the attacker would, can remotely inject malicious DLL files or a DLL file. And here's the differences that we just went over. And so here's the timeline for this vulnerability, the um, initial release date, and some happenings that went on during this time period. So June 8th, Microsoft issued a patch for privileged escalation vulnerability in the Print Spooler service. That's at 1675. Then Microsoft revised the vulnerability and changed its classification to a RCE, or remote code execution. And then June 27th, Chinese cybersecurity firm um, don't know what that, how to pronounce that, um, published a video demonstrating a local privilege escalation and the remote code execution. So then July 2nd, Microsoft assigns a new CVE, so-called print nightmare vulnerability in the printer spooler service. And that's where we got that 34.52.7. And then July 6th, Microsoft released an out of band patch, a patch released at some other time than the normal release time, I believe it's Patch Tuesdays. I think it's every uh, first Tuesday of the month, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, to address CVE 2021-34-52-7 and provide additional workarounds to defend against the exploit. Um, let me just fact check that right real quick. Uh, patch Tuesdays. When is it occurs on the second Tuesday or sorry, second Tuesday of each month? Yeah, not the first Tuesday. Okay. Just want to get that out of my head. All right, so what makes print nightmare dangerous? It can be exploited over the network. The attacker doesn't need direct access to the machine. Two, the proof of concept was made public on the internet. So anyone the um access to this to a working exploit was made publicly available. That means anyone can go and replicate what they've uh, what they w was released, making it pretty dangerous. And this that's why this was actually the thirty four fifty two seven was um, seen in the wild, and exploited in the wild, where this sixteen seventy five was not exploited in the wild. Their expo exploitation was less likely, and exploitation was d detected. So. That's the difference between these two. So answer the questions below. Oh, sorry. The printer, the print spooler service is enabled by default on domain controllers. There's that word again, domain controllers and computers with system privileges. So provide the CVE of the print spoolers remote code execution vulnerability that does, does not require local access to the machine. And that's at 35 or 34527. 
and what date was the CVE assigned for the vulnerability in the previous question? So if you go to Microsoft web, Microsoft's website, it actually says that it was released July 1st, 2021. But here in the uh, this try hack meme information, it says that it was released on July 2nd. So we're gonna go with the try hack me um, information here. And we see that is the correct answer. So try it yourself. So let's go ahead and start our machine. <clears throat> Excuse me. To understand how the attack works and what logs and events are generated, you need to put on your black hat and run the attack on your own. But of course, it requ requires permission from management to perform this attack in your employer's environment, even if it's an isolated environment. Fret not, you can perform the attack against the attached virtual machine and not in your employer's environment. So we start the virtual machine. We should see IP address appear in a second. So um, in these examples, the victim is this dot 200 and we are the dot 100. So um, we're gonna clean up our attack box. In my case, this is actually my machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and uninstall and pack it. Oh, let me go and switch to root. If I can, if I can type this password correctly. All right. And we're going to make a temporary directory called, um, I guess, printer. Print. Let's go ahead and put print nightmare. I'm going to CD into that directory. All right, cool. So, again, uninstalling impacket. Not sure if this is actually necessary, but we're gonna go ahead and do it. And then we're gonna uninstall this uh, PYSN1, some kind of Python pack package. I guess it's supplemental to unpack it. Oh, what did that say? Can't uninstall. All right, whatever. And then we're going to, I think reinstall impact it here shortly um since we didn't uninstall this oh well, it wouldn't hurt i guess to run it again it's our requ requirements already satisfied cool 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 and let's go ahead and clone this repository that contains our exploit and we're going to clone the repository that has impact it I'm going to CD into impact it and then I believe it's Python three setup and then install. And once, once that is done, we should have our uh, impact it installed, reinstalled. Go ahead and clear the terminal. And in case if you're wondering how I'm clearing so fast, uh, control L is a shortcut. Just recently learned that instead of typing clear, just hit Control L. It is a time saver. So again, remember the victim is the 200. We're the 100, so we're going to replace where the 100 is with our IP address because we're um, entering our local hosts here. And I believe that is my try hack me IP address, which is really helpful. This new version of Cali is pretty dope. I'm going to copy this, paste clipboard. Uh, so I'll keep the lo local port the same because it doesn't really matter because so we're going to open a handler, uh, like a reverse or a, a connection and MSF or what's it called? Metasploit here in a second, Meterpreter. Uh, but 10, 13, 2, remember this is our local IP address. Keep the port the same. Uh, the thing I'm going to change here is uh, change the name of this to shell.dll i'm just going to output this right here in the temp print nightmare um actually let's change the directory real quick i'm going to output this malicious uh dll file here in the temp print nightmare directory so while that is running let's go ahead and fire up metasploit whoops 
Oh my goodness, I can't type today. I'm going to switch back to root. And uh, MSF console. That is Meterpreter, Mesploit. So we're waiting for Mesploit to, to um, finish running or opening, starting. And okay, so now we have our malicious DLL file that we're going to get onto the victim machine. And that is the shell.dll, the thing we just created up here. All right, cool. Metasploit is running. So I'm just going to copy and paste these commands here. So we're looking for or using this uh, exploit multi handler. It's pretty much like it helps us to create a reverse. Um, a reverse shell once we get our exploit up and running and we can look at the options here just so you know what the the rest of these um, values are doing so set payload to Windows 64 and interpreter reverse TCP and then we're going to set, set the L host our local host to again that um, 1013 to 178 this is specific to my machine so yours should be different we're going to set the L port to, oops, that's why I should copy and paste right here. Set L port to uh, the same port that we specified in our malicious DLL file, which is uh, four fours. And we can check options again, make sure it looks right. L hosts, yep, 1013 to 178, L port four fours. And, um, Yep, that is it. So we can go ahead and run. I think run and then dash J. Yep, we're going to create this as a job. It's going to pretty much put it in the background. So, all right, so now we need to host the malicious DLL in the SMB, or SMB share running on the attacker box. We'll use the attack box in this example, but I'm not using the attack box. I'm using my machine. So um, we can just copy and – or actually, it's not the same. So – Impact it. Right, there it is right there. Impact it. SMB server share root desktop share. And then you want this SMB2 support option. And I believe we have to create that. Uh, we have to create that uh, that um, directory. Sorry. Root desktop. Oh, sorry. There. Cool. I forgot I did this already. All right, so that is there. Root desktop share. I'm going to share that directory over SMB. Hit enter. So it looks the same. Looks like everything is working so far. So a brief explanation of the command in the above image, which is this. Uh, this is the name of the SMB share for the exploit execution. And there's an example. This is the local folder that will store the malicious DLL. And that is our example here, the root desktop share, and then our malicious DLL. And we forgot to move the, uh, forgot to move that DLL into our share folder. So let's move shell into root desktop share. And we can go back, let's make sure it's there. Yep. So, yep, looks good. It is finally time to run the exploit. And we're going to navigate to where our, just going back and forth here, right? We're going to navigate back to our uh, exploit folder. And there we see the CVE 2021-1675. Let's go ahead and Python that thing out. CVE 2021. And basically just copy and paste this entire string here. And then you want to change your IP address because this, this is your local host here. Remember that dot 100 represents our the attack machine. And then we're going to change the name because I named it shell.dll instead of malicious.dll. And this is, um, I'll just read it here. This is the name of the domain controller here. This finance01.thm department.local. And this is a username and password because it has to be authenticated. And then the location, the the location to the SMB path storing the malicious DLL. And this is our 
attacker IP address share and then our shell.dll. So let's go ahead and let's make sure this thing looks right. 10, 13, 2, 178. Looks good to me. And we're going to go ahead and hit enter. Whoa, what happened? Oh, it's wrong, wrong IP address. It's from last night. 10, 10, 18 dot 33. Remember that is the IP address of our, um, the vulnerable machine here. Let's hit enter again. Looks like it's running. We have a connection here. And if everything goes correctly, we should see, let's, can I, no, I can't. Just go back and forth. Just waiting for this exploit to run through its complete to completion. So it looks like it's already it's executing that DLL file that we uploaded that we're sharing from our um, attacker machine. Oh, looks like we have some activity here. Interpreter session open. That's good. That's a very good sign. Come on. So it says the session's opened, but we have some errors. So let's, let's check this out, sessions. We have an active session, so it looks like it did complete successfully sessions one switch to that session clear the console control l and let's do um ls because we can use linux commands even though we're connected to a windows machine awesome looks like we're on the machine let's cd to c users and administrators because we're looking for the flag that's residing on the administrator's desktop ls and we're going to cd into desktop ls again and then we see our flag dot text here and again we're using linux commands so we're going to cat flag dot text and i'm not sure try hack me's um policy on sharing flags so i'm just going to leave that right here and then keep going but this does work. Um, so being the person that I am, I'm just going to go ahead and put this in here because I don't I want it to be green, to turn green. Perfect. All right, now we're done with task three, I believe, task four. All right, so now I'm indicators of compromise so sorry this is too small stop right here for a second so let's imagine the worst case scenario that the thm department was compromised a couple of days a couple of days after the poc the proof of concept for print nightmare was released and you are the thm department's threat hunter your company suspects that an attacker used print nightmare to access the domain controller there's that word again and your task is to find evidence of indicators or indicators of compromise. So the next question will be what indicators should you look for in order to detect the print nightmare attack? So the attacker most likely use rpcdump.py to scan for vulnerable hosts. And after they find the vulnerable print server, the attacker can then execute the exploit code, similar, similar to the Python script in the previous task. And that loads the malicious DLL file, which we did earlier. And then more specific, specifically, the exploit code will call the PC add printer driver EX function from the authenticated user account and then load the malicious DLL file in order to exploit the vulnerability. The PC add printer driver EX function is used to install a printer driver on the system. 
So to keep this in mind, it's used to install a printer driver on the system. And <clears throat> Signia shared some advanced threat hunting tips to detect print nightmare. When hunting for print nightmare, you should look for the following. And this is going to be extremely important here in a second. So take note. Search for the spool SVEXE process, launching run DLL32.exe as a child process without any command line arguments. Because remember, we're taking advantage of a vulnerability in the spool service. Uh, blue that's from up here earlier, which I said to make note of. And we're running a malicious DLL file. So that's why we will see the run DLL32.exe uh, process. Um, going on, considering the usage of the PC add printer driver EX function, you will most likely find the malicious DLL dropped into one of these folders. And that is Winder, basically your C uh, colon for slash or backslash Windows. System32 spool drivers x64.3 folder, along with DLLs that were loaded afterwards. Um, same path, except this old directory is appended to it. You should proactively monitor the folders for any unusual DLLs. So it's a big hint here. Hunt for the suspicious spool SVEXE child processes, CMD, EXE, PowerShell, etc. The attacker might even use Mimicats to perform the attack. In this case, a print driver named QMS810 will be created. This can be detected by logging the registry changes. Sysmon ID 13. It's another thing to take note of. Um, not for this challenge, but for the next one. Um, anyway, search for the DLLs that are, are part of the proof of concept codes that were made public, such as my exploit DLL, evil.dll, add cube, rev, rev2, main64, mem, memolib. If they are present on the endpoint, you can find them with event ID 808, another important thing to take note of in Microsoft Windows print service. And Splunk also did a great job of providing us with some detection search queries. And um, unless you're using Splunk to like do some threat hunting, you really don't have to worry about this for this challenge, but it's some if you're you know, working in Splunk or if you're um, interested in, then this is some pretty cool stuff to, to know. All right, anyways. <clears throat> and here's some rooms that you can learn Splunk. I might be doing some of these in the future. So provide the first folder path where you will likely find the drop DLL, DLL payload. And so remember from here, it is this winder, da da da. And this, again, just stands for C colon backslash windows provide the function that is used to install printer drivers and that was the uh, PC printer add or PC add printer driver function what tool can the attacker use to scan for vulnerable print servers and that is the SMB or um, RPC dump dot pi All right, cool. So now that we've learned how to kind of detect this, uh, these things happening in our environment, we can be prepared for what's coming next. So detection via Windows event logs. And let's go ahead and start this machine, which will terminate the other one. And we'll start reading while that spins up. So Windows event logs are detailed records of security system and application notifications created by the Windows operating system. There are some logs that record events related to sprint, print spooler activity. Still, they might not be enabled by default and need to be configured using Windows group policy or PowerShell. The logs related to print spooler activity are Microsoft Windows print service admin, Microsoft Windows print service operational, and we can detect the print nightmare artifacts by looking at the endpoint events or Windows event logs mentioned above. You can look for the following event IDs and it's event ID 316 under the print service folder or um, path. And it looks for printer driver files for Windows 64 version three that was added or updated. Um, event 808, security event source has attempted to register and it can, can, can detect unsigned drivers and malicious DLLs loaded by spool sv.exe. 
event ID 811 logs the information regarding failed operations. Then we have um, Windows or SMB client um, file path here and event ID 310.17. This event ID can be also be used to detect unsigned drivers loaded by spool sv.exe. And then we just have the base like Windows system and that is event ID 7031, service stop operations. This event ID will show you unexpected termination of print spooler service. We can also use Sysmon to detect print nightmare terror. And um, Sysmon operational, event ID 3, network connections, look for suspicious ports. Event ID 11, file create, file creation events are being logged. You can look for a load of DLLs in the print spooler driver directory. And that is what we saw earlier. And event IDs 23 and 26, file delete. You can hunt for deleted malicious DLLs. So you are still in the middle of hunting for THM department to determine if the print nightmare attack actually took place. Armed with all the knowledge above, can we detect the print nightmare artifacts in the event logs? So we're going to go ahead and um, show this split screen um, here at the top. Wait, no, where is it? Uh, where is this thing? Usually it says just split because I've already started the machine. So okay, that's cool. So I'll come back when that's done. All right. So for some reason I had to terminate and restart the machine. So um, now you see the show split view up here at the top like it's supposed to show. Um, still waiting for that to start, but just a note. All right, perfect. So this finally opened up for me. Let's view in full screen just to make it more visible for everyone. And I'm gonna pop this out here. That way I can switch back and forth. Okay, perfect. All right, so we're gonna need this information to do some threat hunting on this uh, on this server. So let's open our Windows Event Viewer, and we can just do that by searching here in the bottom left corner, Event Viewer. Close out these tabs. So here in the event logs, we're going to right click, we're going to create a custom view. And last spinning, um, we're going to open up the print service logs and the SMB client logs. Print service, SMB client, and Sysmon. All right, so let's go ahead and check all of these. And then hit this little carrot, Windows logs, or sorry, applications and services logs, Microsoft, Windows, and what did I say, SMB client, SMB client, and uh, the print service, obviously. Print, 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 print. And then Sysmon. Hopefully, this is you're able to see these things. I know it's kind of small. So, print servers, SMB client, and Sysmon. I believe we have everything that we need here uh, in, in event logs, anyways. And we're going to filter them by event IDs. So, 316, 808, 811. And we can just separate these event IDs by comma, uh, 310, 17, 310, 17, and 7031, 310, 17, and 7031. Oh, not sure what happened. 7031, 310, 17, just making sure. 3, 11, 23, 26. And it's important to know what these were we're looking for here. So that's why we read through the description of the event IDs earlier. So let's hit OK, make sure everything looks good. OK. And we'll just call this print nightmare. 
doesn't matter. You can name it whatever you want. So now we're getting to the meat and potatoes of this challenge. So I'm going to sort by lowest to highest. So the first question is uh, provide the name of the drop DLL, including the error code. So um, we're looking for a file creation, right? Drop DLL, including the error code. Or actually, and let's read through this again. Um, look for printer driver file that was added or updated. Um, a security event source that has attempted to register can detect unsigned drivers and malicious DLLs loaded by SV.ac, SV and that's the event ID 808. So let's start here with the event ID 808. And I believe it's all the way at the bottom here. And looky here, we have print spooler failed to load a plugin module. And that's the path. And then we have the malicious DLL here, the service host with a zero ST DLL. Um, I believe we need the full path or just the name of the, so provide the name of the drop DLL, including the error code. And there's error code right there. And let's copy and paste, then comma, and then we can copy and paste the error code. And that's the correct answer. So then provide the event log name and the event ID that detected the drop DLL. Um, the event log name was Microsoft Windows Print Service Admin. Um, can I copy and paste? Yeah, cool. And the event ID was uh, 808. So find the source name and event ID when the print spooler server stopped unexpectedly and how many times was this event logged. So find the source name and event ID when the print spooler server stopped unexpectedly. And if we look back up here at our event IDs, we see that event ID 811 logs information of regarding failed operations. So something stopping unexpectedly is definitely a failed operation. I'm not sure we have, um, looks like we don't have an entry for that. Hmm. Let's make sure that my filter is correct. Pretty sure I had, um, pretty sure I had 811, right? Yeah, 811. Had the SMB print service, SMB and Sysmon, yeah, okay. Let's refresh. Nope, so we're looking for something else. Okay, interesting. All right, so find the source name and the event ID when the print spooler service stopped unexpectedly. missing something it feels like we're missing something then ID 811 yeah it should definitely be in here is there like a time or something Let's just create another filter here, custom view. Oh, 7031. So the event ID will show you the unexpected termination of the print, print spooler service. 
not it's not eight eleven. It's seventy thirty one. So my my mistake. Seventy thirty one. Yeah, seventy seven zero three one. Right. Windows system. Oh, look here. I forgot. I forgot one of the event logs. System. Windows system. All right, my mistake. Hit OK. There we go. The print spooler service terminated unexpectedly. It has done this one time. So the name of this, um, the name, the source name and the event ID. So the source name is service control manager. And then that was 7031 and it's done it one time. All right, cool. See, importing, ensuring that you have the right logs is extremely important. Um, okay, anyways. So after some threat hunting steps, you are more confident now that it's a print nightmare attack. Hunt for the attacker's shell connection, provide the log name, event ID, and destination port. So I believe it's event ID 3 here. So we're looking for network connections. And we can sort this again to see the lowest number first. And then let's just search for, um, what's the name of that file? Servicehost.dll. Let's search for this and see if this uh, process or this DLL has made any, um, or actually it should be the process name, right? So that print, um, I forget the name of it already. <laughs> so bad. Um, the spool sv.exe. So let's search through here, find, and spool sv. So we're looking for network connections created by this process. And we have one here. No, that's the, that's the file creation. So let's keep looking. Looking for event ID three, and there may not be one. Okay, so let's try something else. The image name, image name. I would think it would be this spool. Oh, let's check the run DLL. See if we can find any processes that is creating a network connection using this as run DLL 32, I believe. Uh, let's see, what is this? Well, let's just go through all of them. Oh, just that one. Okay, cool. So what is this connecting to? This run DLL process has created a connection to this or this is destination IP, and then we have the ports here. It's like it's connecting out to uh, maybe a AWS IP address. So let's try that. Um, provide the log name, event ID, and destination port. Log name is Microsoft Windows Sysmon Operational. If I can copy this, it's the event ID three. Event ID three and destination port, which is 4747. And that is the correct answer. So I, the reason I got that um, answer correctly, or I found that information was because of what we went over earlier that um, the print service was spawning or using, um, had enabled a child process of run DLL 32 to create a network connection. And it's somewhere in here. Um, sorry, I'm getting distracted. All right, <laughs> so, oh no, you think you found the attacker's connection. You need to know the attacker's IP address and the destination host name in order to, to terminate the connection. So provide the attacker's IP address and the host name. And it's comma separated. So we have the IP address here. 
comma, se- comma separated with the host name. If I can copy that. And correct answer. So a sysmon file created event was generated and logged. Provide the full path to the drop DLL and the earliest creation time in UTC. So I believe that's what we were trying to search for earlier. Um, mistakenly, we should be looking for that print or a spool. SVC. All right, I believe that's the name. Oh my God, I'm so bad. Spool SV, SV. Oh, it wasn't that, that far off. And we're looking for, for a file create for, um, for the malicious DLL that was dropped. So we can kind of just search through here. Oh, there it is. Dang, I missed it. Remember it was the service host with a zero. Oh my God, missed it again. Okay, the first instance, right? In the earliest creation time. All right, let's try this again. There it is. So what do we need? The full path to the drop DLL, which is this right here. And then the time in UTC. And that's correct. All right, cool. So on to task seven. So let's download these these task files, which is a PCAP. I've already downloaded like three times. Okay, so let's delete that. Uh, let's open up Wireshark. And we're going to drag and drop this file into Wireshark. Hopefully my filter is already set up from last night. Okay, cool. So yours aren't looking like this where you have the... Uh, Oh, actually, yeah, this is right. This is right. Where you have the source port and desk port and all the other stuff. You can go in here to column preferences. And to create the source port and desk port, you just hit this add this or add column here. Just name it whatever, like source port. Then you come in here and um, look for source port unresolved, just for the port number. And then you can drag and drop it to wherever you see fit. So I'm going to remove this because I've already done it. But it's just for those of you who are wondering how I got this like this to look like this. So now let's go back to our challenge page. Packet captures play a crucial role in detecting signs of compromise. If you're not familiar with Wireshark, no worries. Uh, you can join this room to figure out more about it. Detecting the print nightmare attack specifically to uh, 2021, 1675 and 2021, 34, 52, 7. By analyzing the network traffic, it's not as easy as inspecting the artifacts like Windows event logs on the victim's machine. So the attacker relies on adding a printer driver using DCE RPC commands. And here is a link to it if you want to read more about it. And it's using the RPC add printer driver or RPC add printer driver EX function. And DCE RPC stands for distributed computing environment slash remote procedure calls and is the remote procedure call that establishes APIs and an over the network protocol. But what that what what makes the detection of the attacker hard of the attack harder is that there are legitimate uses for the RPC add printer driver or RPC add printer driver X commands. So you cannot always rely only on the network traffic analysis to be confident that the print nightmare attack occurred in your environment. So there are legitimate uses for these two commands. According to Corelight, it can even get harder to detect, especially if the exploit wraps the DCE RPC calls in SMB3 encryption, which we'll see here in a second. To identify the encrypted DCE RPC calls, you need to somehow decrypt and decode the payloads, which is a time-consuming task. So the Corelight released a Zeek package, and um, Corelight, I believe, owns Zeek and Bro, um, or Zeek now, it's not called Bro anymore that detects the printer driver additions over DCE RPC commands that are not encrypted. So it attaches the PCAP, which we downloaded. Um, I guess we can terminate this machine. We don't need it anymore. And we're gonna inspect the PCAP and answer the questions below. So the first question is, what is the host name of the domain controller? All right, so let's go back to that PCAP and Wireshark. 
and my first instinct was to you know filter on DNS, see if we can find some um, a DNS name you know associated with our domain controller, and um, it's a lot of noise in here. So then, I kind of, my next instinct was you know we use SMB and the previous attack. So um, let's filter on that and see you know if we can find some communication between workstation, domain controller, that kind of thing. Um, so we have this host announcement here that this win 10 blah, 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 workstation, this server, this is domain controller, has all this information here. And uh, we see the these two hosts are actually using SMB. The only two hosts in this PCAP that are using SMB. So one of them has to be our attacker and one of them has to be our domain controller. And just to further kind of see what's going on in this network, we can go up to statistics and then uh, go to endpoints and we filter on IPv4. We can see all the IPv4 connections. We have this 10.0.0.2, not sure what that is. Uh, we have our 2.36 and this 174, the two IP addresses that we're mostly interested on, in. We have some other local um, IPs here and then all the rest of this stuff is like external, um, just noise really, things we really don't have to be concerned about because um, we are looking for a um, two local IP addresses. So back to our PCAP and I'm going to filter on uh, IP address that 236 or IP address equals uh, I believe it was 10 let's go back here in points 124 236 and 114 174 can I copy this I don't think I can 10 uh, 10 114 174 so now we're looking for uh, communication between these two hosts and SMB can we do that so yeah okay we have this this communication between these two hosts you see back and forth um, so the host that initiated the SMB connection was this 1010 uh, 10, 124 236 it looks like uh, protocol request and then the 174 responds to the 236 so I'm thinking that this 236 is our attacker so let's go ahead and enter that and see if we're correct 10 10 124 236 oh actually sorry what's the host name of the domain controller I'm getting ahead of myself um, so host announcement which you saw earlier this win 10 blah 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 um see is there a net bios here it is source name and copy this uh value go back to try hack me sorry it's way too many tabs open and we have the host name of the domain controller what is the local domain wait let me close this out because this is getting my nerves C cool all right so um, let's see down here we can see the the domain controller and the domain which is print nightmare dot local what user account was utilized to exploit the vulnerability so we, again down here we have the user and this is just the the path to the user's name is low priv Larry that's pretty funny what was the malicious DLL used in the exploit? So we keep scrolling, keep scrolling. We're looking at the connection between the domain controller, um, which I believe is the 174, and the attacking machine, which is 236. Again, based on who initiated the, con the connection first, which was the 236. The attacker wants to connect to the domain controller, right? Um, we can actually see we have some unencrypted SMB traffic here, and we see the let me in dot DLL. Pretty on the nose. Uh, what was the attacker's IP address? Again, 10, 10, uh, I believe it's 2. 
Uh, let's go up here. 124, 236. And what was the UNC path where the malicious DLL was hosted? And that's just like a full path with like the forward slash, forward slash, or backslash, I mean. And we see that 174, um, sorry that this share is open here on 174. Um, I'm sorry, oh gosh, this, this share here is open on 176. This is connecting to this. You see here the desk port is 445 on the 236, our attacker machine. So our attacker is hosting this share just like we did earlier. I believe we can copy this as, um, Maybe we can't copy it. Let's see down here. Kind of being lazy. I can just type it out. Uh, 10, 10, 124, 236 shares. 124, 236 shares with a Z. And that's the correct answer. There are encrypted packets in the results. What? was the associated protocol. Again, we were talking about SMB3 encryption. And if we keep scrolling, we see that we're not able to see what's happening after a certain point because we have encrypted SMB3. And so the answer to this question is SMB3. So mitigation, mitigation tactics. So it was not just a nightmare. And now you are 100% confident that it was a print nightmare attack on a THM department. So we check the other DCs, the domain controllers on the network, and they appear to be clean. It is not the end of the world just yet. We can still mitigate or defend against the attack by disabling the print spooler on all domain controllers and modify the registry settings if ap applicable. And how can you do it? So Microsoft provided the steps to, to detect if print spooler service is enabled and how to disable them. So first you need to determine if the service is running and you can use this command here. Um, using Windows PowerShell, run as administrator. If print spooler is running or if the service is not set to disable, then select one of the options below to either disable the print spooler service or to disable inbound remote printing through group policy. So then they give us some options to disable the print spooler service and the stop service, the name of the service spooler and you force stop, uh, again, using PowerShell. Set servers, uh, name spooler startup type disabled that way if you reboot the computer it doesn't automatically start by disabling the print spooler service you remove the ability to print locally and remotely so if you're not using your dc to print locally or remotely which you probably won't be doing this is not such a bad thing to do um, again your use case depends on your environment uh, the settings via group policy can be configured as follows computer figure configuration administrative templates printers and then you want to dis disable the allow print spooler to accept client connections, and this will block remote attacks. So um, this policy will, will block the remote attack vector by preventing inbound remote printing operations. So remote printing will no longer work, but local printing to a directly attached, attached device will still work. And for uh, just a note that to remember that for the group policy to take effect across the domain, you want to issue a GP update force command. And here's some more information on using group policy settings to control printers. And there was a security update for Windows Server 2012, 2016, Windows 10, and it, that was released last year on July 7th. And additional, additional steps for mitigation besides installing the updates are um, configuring some registry settings. So, basically disabling disabling point and print by setting your uh, registry key to zero set set it to zero um and then some additional options here no warning no elevation on install set to zero update prompt settings set to zero and have uh having no warning no ele elevation on install set to one makes your system vulnerable by design so just some things to note if you're actually configuring this or disabling, mitigating this attack in your own environment. So provide two ways to manually disable the print spooler service. So as we went over earlier, we can do it via PowerShell and then we can do it also via group policy.
And where can you disable the print, spooler, service, and group policy? And here we're giving the path for that setting. Provide the command in PowerShell to, to detect if print spooler service is enabled and running. Oh, sorry. Provide the command in PowerShell. Uh, so we can check and see if it's running by get service name spooler to determine if this print spooler service is running. And here's our conclusion. So congratulations, we have reached the final chapter of this room and saved the THM department from the horrors of print nightmare. And I'm hoping that you enjoyed this little walkthrough. Um, I plan to do more of these and I say that a lot and I really do plan to do is just, you know, life gets in the way, so many things happening. But um, I believe that this is a really good precursor to the print nightmare again room. Um, I plan on doing this later tonight. I finished it halfway earlier this morning while I was sitting in the waiting room getting my tires changed. Uh, let's see, newest. Oh, we have a new one too. Okay, cool. So print nightmare again. I'm going to finish this. It's an easy challenge. Uh, I'm not going to show you the answers, but see, I'm 67% done. So you should have a video for this pretty soon um again doing this because of the uh you know hacker ween hack hacker ween whatever it's called so hopefully you guys are getting some value from this and i'm having a lot of fun doing it so until next time and stay safe and i'll see you soon